Thanks for joining me today, Neve. Um, I'm here to talk to you about your time basically with us at Phoenix because obviously you have spread your wings and have flown off to other teams. Can't believe you left. <laughs> um, I just kind of want to talk to you about taking you all the way back to the beginning, if you can remember that far, um, and tell us a bit about when you first started at Phoenix and how you felt. Um, when I first started, it was really the first experience in sport at all I'd ever had. So I was very anxious because I wasn't an athletic person at all, like whatsoever. And I was, I was definitely the coat rack in PE classes. Um, so I had no experience and I had to literally get tricked to go um, to train when it was in Blaken at the time um, by my mum and I was wearing a little red frilly dress because it was on my mum's birthday we'd just gone for a meal she's like we're here we're out might as well go so um went and I kind of being not someone being around a lot of wheelchair users at all at that point in my life um kind of got a bit overwhelmed by the amount of disabled people um and kind of put my head down and Anna managed to get me into a sports chair and then um, just spent most of my time just pushing up and down the side not looking at anybody and um, it was definitely a very anxious time um, and it was just kind of trying to settle in I guess because it was a whole it was like opening a door to like a whole new life I've always I'd always always been disabled was born disabled but I've always been the only disabled person. In high school, I was the only wheelchair user. Primary school was the only wheelchair user. It was definitely a, a tough thing to get the hang of at that time, yeah. Taking you back to that first training session and you're like, I'm not really into sports. I'm wearing this dress, what's going on? Um, did you see yourself carrying on at the club? Like how, how was that feeling with the team members? Everyone was welcome coming up and talking to me and it was more me that was kind of putting that block up. Um, but I just feel like I struggled with that, with, my, with myself. So, Going back, I think I kind of went over a period of week where it was kind of hit or miss. It was kind of like a, I was kind of feeling it, but then not feeling it. And I think I think Jack, my little brother, went more times than I did at the beginning. He definitely got got into it straight away, and I was the more I was more the one that had to be pushed into it because I was being a bit reluctant because I was like, I've not am I really a sporty person? I think the people is what made me keep going back and the the thought of like of the being more and that sounds so sounds weird but if the thought of like there being more clubs out there which means more disabled people to me and um it was definitely I think the community side of it appealed to me at the beginning and that kind of pushed me to get involved. So fast forward a few more training sessions now becoming kind of like a regular at the club um how did that feel did you feel like you were gaining a family did you kind of see yourself there for a lot longer um I'd got got into the chair that kind of became my my first chair and that that was a big comfort to have that chair because that was something I got in I knew that was my chair so I got into old and I remember always being fast in a chair and um, people in the club taking notice of that and being like, you're just, I don't understand that you're so fast because I'd never played any sport. I'd never been involved in anything. The only experience in a chair I'd had is my day chair pushing to school and back. So I think the whole going back and being like getting involved more made me settle down a lot more and made me become quite more confident in myself because all through like beginning like six months a year possibly 
of my sporting career. I was an anxious wreck going anywhere, um, always having panic attacks going to any new venue, even if I knew the people there. And it was kind of the plays at Phoenix became kind of a, a safety blanket for me. Going anywhere where I knew Anna would be there or any other Phoenix players, I was kind of like, okay, this is, I'm settled now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be okay. Like, first time going to Women's League, I was a wreck. And the only thing that kept me okay was Anna's going to be there. Everything's going to be okay. Kaz is going to be there. Everything, all the people that was like my safety blanket were going to be there. But I think that's definitely the, the whole as I kept going, the Phoenix family became a safety blanket for me and my anxiety in the end, like big time. <laughs> so I personally remember your first game because um, I was with you, but just tell people watching kind of how that felt being chosen for a game and then actually playing a proper game because I remember my first one and I, I thought I was going to die. So <laughs> Talk us through that a bit. Yeah, um, my first game was with with Angels, um, uh, the Women's League, because I meant the first Women's League I didn't play, and I just kind of went and got to know the people, and um, it was more of the community, but I was like itching, I was like, I want to go and play, like, there's just such a, it's just a, you get drawn into it, and but then when, like, the next Women's League came around and I got to play, and it was for the, the Div 3 team, I believe, for Angels, yeah. And um, I mean, um, a lot of, like, the Carlisle Panthers team was involved with the Div 3 team. And so I didn't know any of them. And I was very, felt very out of my depth because never played before. And Div 3 was, to me, was such a big, like, Div. And I was like, oh, these players know what they're doing. And I have no idea what I am doing. And it was kind of, I remember, I remember a lot, a lot of the time I worked with um, Lauren Beatty on the, on the court. And I remember the, the coach kept saying to me, he kept saying, do you realise what you're doing? I was like, no. <laughs> He's like, you keep, you're curling her in, you're getting her into the key. And I had no idea what I was doing because I was just pushing around like a headless chicken. Um, and I think that kind of, that realization that I was doing something right without even realizing kind of settled me but I don't know, it was very overwhelming the first game because like I said I had no idea what I, I was doing the only play I'd had was with Phoenix and that was training um so that was literally the first proper in-depth experience and there was so many was crowds and there was loads of people around and I had no idea what I was doing. The coach was telling me what to do and I was like, I had no idea what's going on. And then after that game, Anna was like, we're going to try on the Div 2 bench. And I was like, <laughs> I was so, I felt so out of my depth at that point. I was like, I have no idea what's going on. I just kind of followed Anna around. I was like, I'm just going to follow you. <laughs> no idea what I was doing. And so I think... The first game was definitely overwhelming, but I think the whole experience that the Phoenix lot had given me at the beginning of the family and the, the welcome and the safety blanket kind of definitely helped me feel more comfortable going into the new setting. And I think about it a lot, to be fair, when I'm going into a game, I think about my first game and how I felt and how the feedback helped me a lot and the, the people around. Um, it's definitely a game that has stuck with me even now, even when I went to Thailand, it was a game that I thought of to help me calm my nerves. Um, there was a moment, because when we first played together, there was a lot of screaming going on. Um, <laughs> I was screaming constantly, both of us, almost like we were scared of everything, including the ball. Um, what was that turning point where the screaming turned into competitive do you know what I'm going to take this further and I, I want this to be kind of like a, a full-time thing um I think I've always been a screecher 
because I always remember Kaz saying, if you don't screech this training session, I'll buy you a chocolate bar. Because it's always a thing. If someone came towards me, I'll just like, oh, didn't like it. I didn't like the idea of being hit or hitting anyone. And and then I don't, I don't really I remember because I remember Phoenix the first awards I attended, and we did the paper plates awards. I got the paper plate for fearless because I'm. I think I knocked Anna out of a chair, and um, it was because I just charged into it. It was a complete foul. <laughs> I am quite an aggressive player <laughs> and I don't know where that came from because I was very much a person that was scared of contact, or scared of someone was coming near me. You could have the ball, I don't care, just don't hit me. <laughs> um, I think Women's League pushed me to think, like being, seeing like the likes of Robin play and all the other like Paralympians playing. It was around the time the Paralympics was just about to kick off. So I had the wim first women's league of watching them all play and then seeing them all at Paralympics. And it was kind of like, she's on my team. She's on my team. And it was, it was so weird. And um, I think seeing them being so humble at Angels and then seeing them go on and be complete badasses at the Paralympics. And then... It just kind of, kind of made me think, you know, like, what can I do? Like, if I stop being a scared little girl on court, can I, like, go on to be like that? And so the whole, I think, going from screaming, <laughs> which we still do now, Steph, you have to admit, it, we still scream on court now. <laughs> I was kind of, I guess, letting out, um, years of being not being very included in sport um being the only wheelchair user having to miss a lot you know watch my family's a very sporty family and growing up with my older brother being involved in car and then having to kind of sit back and watch I think it was all a bit a lot of emotions coming out when I play and I think that's what that's what I do now, to be fair. I've had a rough week. A lot of emotions will come out in my play, and I think that's something that changed a lot. I kind of realised I can channel how I'm feeling into my play, and I can, I can almost benefit off it in a way because channeling emotions, you, you're concentrating on that. You're kind of... You, you're kind of letting it go and it's kind of becoming more of my play and so that's how I became more relaxed in it and more in the game because I found the more I focused on that the more I was in the game then if I don't get anxious before a game I'm probably not going to play that great because I have nothing to feed off <laughs> so I become that scared little girl again 